Hello, this is Tommy Franks. Welcome to the Four Star Leadership Podcast, product of the General Tommy Franks Leadership Institute and Museum. We're here to get a view into the lives of the legacy makers, the movers, and the shakers of today. Offer insights from the full spectrum of the leadership community. We'll talk to former four-star students and explore their leadership development path. We'll work to find out what they are about today and learn from the opportunities they've made for themselves in this world. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome you to this podcast. Remember, leaders are not born, they're developed. And welcome to episode 33 of Core Principles of Leadership with General Tommy Franks. I'm your host, Dr. Jill Green. Today, I'm thrilled to be able to chat with a four-star alumnus, Joshua Elias. Joshua attended four-star leadership just this past summer. So I'm excited to hear how he has continued to develop his four core principles of leadership and his thoughts on why every high school leader should be applying for four-star leadership with General Tommy Franks. Before we get started in our program, we'll have a quick word from one of our major sponsors, REI Oklahoma. REI Oklahoma is proud to be part of the General Tommy Franks Leadership Institute and Museum in the production and distribution of these podcasts designed to inspire leaders and difference makers. At REI Oklahoma, we have been working with small business leaders, entrepreneurs, and people who are driven to succeed for years. Highly motivated people working to own their own businesses, live in their own homes, and make the world a better place since its beginning. REI Oklahoma has continued to identify hurdles and deliver holistic solutions to create job growth and help neighborhoods thrive in both rural and urban communities. REI Oklahoma looks forward to visiting with you about helping your business and community grow. Visiting reiok.org or call 1-800-658-2823 to start the conversation. The Labar family is a fourth generation Oklahoma family. That may not sound like a long time, but our grandfathers were born here within the Comanche Nation before the land run. We are the proudest sponsor of the Tommy Franks Four Star Leadership Podcast. We hope listeners will heed the words of these distinguished men and women who have served our country at the highest level and across all walks of life. All right, so we are uh, with one of our four star alumni today, Joshua Elias, and he is going to help us kick off our 2024 application process and let us know what he learned at Four Star and why he applied and just give us an insight of uh, what is going on in his life since he got back from Oklahoma. So it is so good to have you today, Joshua. Thank you so much for having me. That's good. Can you, t- can you tell us a little bit about what is going on in your life right now? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm in my senior year now at your country day school. It's in Southern Pennsylvania. Um, I just, uh, we were starting a basketball season now. I'm on our school's varsity. I'm the captain of our school's varsity basketball team. Um, we have got, uh, I, I, oh, I'm involved in my school's minority student union, uh, student government, as well as, uh, a, a lot, like sports club. I got a lot of stuff going on right now, a lot of college applications getting done. Um, but yeah, it's been great since I got him back. Yeah, so uh, Joshua contacted me a couple of weeks ago and asked if he could have a letter of recommendation to the University of Texas. And it was that was truly a heartbreaking moment for this uh Oh, you sooner fan, but uh, we uh, we still wish him luck and make sure, you know, it would be great to have him in this part of the country. So I guess that's how we need to look at it. So um, and when do you think you'll start hearing from the uh, 
colleges that you've applied to? Um, a lot of them is between this, like late December around Christmas time, all the way through January to February. Some I get sooner. Some are rolling admission, while some have like dedicated dates. I believe like Texas University of Texas is February one. I'll hear back. So it's like a, it's a the, between December and February. It's like coming out one by one. So yeah. All right. So you're going to have some tough decisions coming up in the next few months. So you'll have to keep us updated on. Uh, what you where where you choose to go so so um joshua can you tell us um how did you hear about four star yeah of course so uh i think sometime last year during my junior year uh one of those nights i was on my phone i was doing a lot of research uh in the spring or early spring rather so i think february on looking for uh, summer programs to really help like broaden my leadership like skill set. Um, I took up I took on a lot of leadership skills during my junior year. So I was getting acclimated to that environment and I was looking for any way I can better myself uh, so I can be the best leader I can be, um, obviously. So I went ahead, I was doing some research and while looking up online, whether it be Instagram, TikTok, on Google, uh, four star leadership. Tommy Franks was the, coming up every time as a common reoccurrence. I was like, let me check this out. I was I, I was able to find the uh, website, do some research, and yeah, um, it looked great. Um, happy I applied, and yeah, I ended up attending. So yeah. So you you had never anyone from your school had never been to our program in Oklahoma. No, ma'am. No one has. So you're the kind of student that we really like to um, get to come and introduce um, to Four Star. So when you went back to Pennsylvania to your to your school, have you let others know what kind of program it is? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, even during my time that I spent in Oklahoma, um, when posting about my travels and just my time there, I had a lot of my friends back home here in Pennsylvania text me, especially my younger friends, asking me, like, what's the program? What's it about? How can I get, learn more about it? How can I apply? So, yeah, I've definitely been spreading the word to my uh, younger peers at my school. And, yeah, hopefully I'm getting a lot of them to apply. So, yeah, I let them know. It was a great experience. So um, when you applied and you were uh, someone that probably didn't know much about the program. So when you got to Oklahoma, what was one of your favorite aspects of the program? I think honestly, it was just meeting uh, a lot of people from a lot of different places. Uh, I've never been in one area like that was so concentrated with like such vast diversity, meeting people from all over, not even just the United States, but the world. Um, I remember vividly on the first day meeting um, someone who's my friend now, Tafik, who came all the way from Jordan, which I thought was super cool. And just meeting people from all walks of life, um, from all over the world, and just like being able to conversate with them, learn things off like from them, and just hear different viewpoints about a lot of things that you wouldn't otherwise hear up here in Pennsylvania. It's just like it was a really cool experience and something that I definitely loved when I first arrived and noticed. Yeah, so that was probably, this was my first four, four star also. And um, in the email that I sent out to the students today, that was one thing that um, I was reflecting on was the actual diversity of this particular class. Um, we had all kinds, all different cultures and backgrounds and 25 different states. And um, it's it's amazing to see those kind of people come together with his, you know, different views and backgrounds and really, you know, come together and create bonds that I hope will last their lifetime. So have you been in contact with any of the students since you've left? Yeah, I've been able to stay in contact with a lot of the guys that I spend a lot of time with, um, especially the, during those long nights working on our ethics bowl and just being able to conversate with them whenever we had some downtime in like the lounge areas and common areas. So yeah, I was able to see, uh, get like their phone number, social media, and stay in contact with them. Like check on them every once in a while, ask them how life's going, talk about different things. A lot of like a lot of the time, we talk about college applications, what it's like, what schools you're applying to, the process, and yeah, bouncing ideas off each other. So yeah, we definitely been staying in contact. Well, that's amazing. So when you got there and you learned about the the four cores of leadership that we we teach and we help you develop. You know, we're, you're only with us for a very short time. So once you go back and you made it back to Pennsylvania and you started school, how have you been able to further develop, um, you know, 
any of those uh, four cores and, and how have they helped you in your leadership positions that you were talking about that you're involved in this year? I think all of them have really resonated with me, um, honestly, and just learning about them through each of the different speakers that came and talked to us. Uh, a lot of the quotes, a lot of the notes that I was taking, I still have my four star notebook like hanging up in my bedroom now. Uh, I, I, I really see that like being used in my day to day life. Um, one thing that really stuck with me was when I believe it was Dr. Cheryl Evans, when she mentioned how a great leader is someone that you work with, but not work for, um, which really hit me like hard, where it's like, it, I look back on my experiences when I was maybe the subordinate to someone else. And when it, when it's known that you're the subordinate, it's not always the best environment to get like to be the most productive and efficient. But when you know you're working with someone and you guys have common values and are working together towards the same goal, it creates a more inclusive environment, which I think was like a big thing that I've carried with me now to my to my high school and just to life and beyond. Yeah, that is a very important skill. And and Dr. Evans, she um, I'm lucky to have her as my mentor and she still teaches me things on a daily basis. And uh, she's someone that we can all look up to. As you have gone back and has anybody commented on you that they have seen growth in you or that you've become a different leader since you have come back to school? Um, I don't know if I can think of a specific time, though, um, always talking with my head of school and also just my basketball coaches, especially with this year being senior year where I really have to step up talking with my athletic director. Um yeah, he really sees how and, and, and lets me know that I really need to step up this year. Um, and I have, but I got to keep it going and make sure that I'm the one that's like leading the charge when it comes to whether it's my team, whether it's the minority student union, no matter what it is, or no matter what group I'm leading um, or even just a part of you. got I have to make sure my voice is heard and pushing everyone forward. When you were younger and you, um, you know, had young leaders that, you know, were involved in different areas of your life or even, you know, uh, adult leaders that you had to, you know, work with or listen to when you were younger, before you came to four star, what did a, a good leader look like to you? I think if you asked uh, like elementary school, me, what a good leader was, I think I would just say someone who just took, takes charge, leads the group forward. Who's always like, I always think of like the lead wolf of the pack the one that's taking, like moving first, making the first move, um, speaking first, doing whatever actually it is first and leading the charge for everyone else to follow. Um, and now I agree to some extent, but also now looking back, just adding the fact that you should be looking back to and helping people guide forward as well. You may not always have to be the first person, but you have to be the first person pushing others forward, which is one of the big thing that really hit me. So yeah, I think that's a really big thing that I would tell my younger self. And also just like looking back on how I used to think and compared to now after four star and just throughout my life. I'm glad that you said that because that is an important aspect of a, a servant leader. And that's something that we learned is, you know, servant leaders, a lot of times you are um, pushing others to do better and letting them take the credit and get the credit for, you know, the team effort. And that's what, a, you know, a service servant leader is. They're selfless. And that's, uh, that's really what you were um, talking about there. So what else has been going on in your life that you want to share with us? Um, I don't know, just a lot. Uh, I mean, I just, I've been trying to take life a lot slower lately, um, get through one day at a time, um, strengthen, strengthening my relationships with my peers now, especially since it's my senior year. It's going to be the last time I'd be able to spend like eight hours a day with them at school. And so making sure I'm like strengthening those relationships so they like continue past high school, past college, throughout my whole life, making sure their lifelong re relationships is a big thing. Um, also just, yeah, like I said, uh, basketball is big coming up uh, as well as um, our school's minority student union, uh, which, which I started earlier last year, um, about the middle of the year last year. So we've been trying to get some events going get some involvement within the student body, um, maybe host a movie night. That's something we're working on right now to watch a movie. Hopefully it's 42 starring Jackie Robinson. Uh, so yeah, um, just a lot of stuff, a lot of cool things going on. Um, and yeah. Let's pause for just a moment for a word from one of our generous sponsors. Hello, this is Dr. Jill Green with the General Tommy Franks Leadership Institute and Museum. I would like to tell you about one of our partner sponsors, Justin Krieger. 
He has worked as an independent insurance agent at Krieger Insurance Agency in his hometown of Hobart, Oklahoma, since 1999. Justin is honored to help with our annual Celebration of Freedom event and has served on the board of directors for the General Tommy Franks Leadership Institute and Museum for many years. He is a fifth-generation farmer and rancher in Kiowa County, where cattle, crops, and even insurance is sold with a handshake. Give him a call at 580-726-3076 or come by the office and speak with Justin or Kathy Lankford about your insurance needs. Krieger Insurance is thankful for their loyal customers and friends who have supported them through the years and look forward to earning your business as well. Justin feels honored to live in such a great country, and he is a proud to be a sponsor of the Core Principles of Leadership podcasts. Please enjoy the rest of this podcast experience brought to you by your friends at Krieger Insurance Agency. Now let's get back to this great episode. So you had said that you had found Four Star on when you were searching through social media and um, Google and that sort of thing. Were you able to attend any other leadership um, programs last summer? Um, Other than Four Star, I can't think of another uh, week long or similar type of program that I had attended, though. I was accepted to a few, though I wasn't able to make it, um, whether it be through something going on with my family or anything like that. But I have still been um, like a one note, one key thing I made sure I did throughout the summer, even after I returned from Four Star, was going through my notes uh, for my notebook. I took a lot of them um, throughout the the week I spent in Oklahoma. So I honestly like can't read it enough times without like catching something new that I didn't like catch the, like a time before. Uh, and so yeah, I've been trying to make it a habit that I'm getting like getting over that and reading over that. So while um, our students are with us, we also take um, we take a couple of field trips, and one of them is to the Oklahoma City um, National Memorial, the the bombing museum. Prior to coming to Oklahoma, had you ever heard of that incident on April nineteenth? No, I hadn't. I can't say I have, um, which is really saddening after learning what happened on that day. Um, and I remember you're very adamant about, uh, that should really be taught more within schools and like push further. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely agree. So when you, um, we, we take students there just to, um, show them what kind of division and hate can, you know, come from, you know, just, you know, within our own cultures. But, um, we also want to show students that, you know, good that can come from from tragedy. So I think that that is an important aspect right now, especially in the world, the way that, you know, things are unfolding and there's lots of uncertainty in the world right now. It's students like you and and young leaders like you that are going to be the ones that step up and, you know, set this world straight. So um, while you've been home, has there been any, you know, thing that you've done that, um, you know, maybe doesn't just benefit you that was, you know, a benefit to um, a community or someone else? One thing that I can think of uh, was running. I was I helped my sister run a little food drive uh, within her community. Uh, She recently moved to Richmond, Virginia. And so I uh, she was helping um, get uh, some food uh, throughout her neighborhood and going around from mailboxes and collecting food. So that was something cool. I really like that I was able to help her out with. And I thought it was a really fun experience and then getting it to the local food bank. Um, and yeah. And that's the kind of leadership um, skills that we try to instill in all of our students is, you know, trying to give back. And um, when you see a problem, don't just, um, you know, see it and, and move on, see it and do something about it. So um, that's something that we try to instill in all of our students. And that's a, that's part of the program that's really, you know, special to me. And I love to hear about how our students, when they're going home, how they really resonate with that and and try to step up and make their community and their schools, their churches, you know, a better, not just for themselves, but for everyone around. So 
tell your sister and you thank you so much for um, taking that project on. And I'm sure it helped a lot of people. We're going to kind of wrap this up. But when you are telling students about Four Star, what is something that you want everyone to know about it? Um, it's really good. I think, honestly, it just really like opens your mind. Uh, one thing I can say, even like when you're going into it, make sure you have an open mind going into it. And even if it's closed, it will get open at some point. Um, from the, the, the variety of speakers that will come and speak to you and the different people that you're going to meet, um, there's a level of like cultural awareness that hits you while you're there, uh, whether it be through the speakers who have had like crazy things happen in their lives to also just like your peers that you're going to be staying with for the week. Um, I think it's just you'll you'll learn a lot from a lot of these people and then you have to be able to like take that, absorb it within yourself, which I know can be hard at first to like hear all these like different viewpoints uh, from like all over the world. But after you let it hit you and like, like let it marinate within your own mind, I think it actually like, it could really make a difference um, even after you finish up four star. So, well, that's like, that's what we like to hear Joshua. So we want you to keep in touch with us when you find out what school you're going to go to next, next, next year. And you know, where life is taking you. Um, just remember that you always have your four-star family here and we're all rooting you on and we're excited to see where you grow and what kind of good that you do in this world. So um, we are very proud of you and we can't wait for the next set of 70 students to come to Oklahoma and be able to have the same experience that Joshua and his peers were able to have. Joshua, thank you so much for joining me today. Go get some studying done and rest up for basketball and we'll all be rooting for you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Thank you again to REI Oklahoma for making this podcast possible. For nearly 40 years, the board, staff, patrons, and supporters of the nonprofit economic development REI Oklahoma have been committed to expanding Oklahoma's economic prosperity, earning the reputation of being one of the most comprehensive economic development organizations in the country. Business lines, training workshops, business consulting, and networking opportunities, as well as technical assistance and even commercial business space are made available to Oklahoma entrepreneurs and small businesses. For low and moderate income individuals and families, down payment and our closing cost assistance is offered. Learn more at reiok.org. On behalf of the Four Star Leadership with General Tommy Frank's team, I'm your host, Dr. Jill Green, and this has been the Core Principles of Leadership with General Tommy Frank's podcast. Now it's your turn, podcast listeners. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and let us know what you think of this episode and all our other episodes. Share this podcast with all the leaders and up-and-coming leaders in your circles. Be sure to give us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast listening platform, and don't forget to mark your calendars the last Friday of each month for another inspiring episode. So for now, as General Franks always says, Go be feisty.